Hello, my name is Nicholas Santillo, and in this Office Mix video, we're going to be looking at the DHIS2 indicators and program indicators. This is the DHIS2 curriculum we've been developing here at Logical Outcomes, and it's based on the DHIS2 Academy workshops that you can see listed on the left hand side of your screen. In this video, we're going to be looking at indicators. Now the required readings for this unit are chapter 13 and 30 from the user manual and chapter 14 from the implementation guide. What are indicators? So if you've already seen the introduction video talking about what indicators are in terms of monitoring and evaluation uh, that was given by Gillian Kerr, uh, you'll have an understanding of what indicators are in terms of why we need them for data. But indicators in DHIS2, as you may have seen from the readings, are slightly different. Uh, specifically, they are um, they are made up of a numerator and a denominator, so they are actually uh, mathematical functions. And they often include one or more data elements. And as we know, data elements are where we enter the data. The indicators uh, do not actually contain any data within the system of DHIS2. They're very easy to change, and they just help in giving us the results that we would like for our pivot tables or our uh, charts. So the numerators are the things that we count. They're at the top of the uh, of the um, of this mathematical function, and the denominators are the bottoms and what we're comparing it to. So we could easily compare number of visits over time, uh, or we could compare uh, any other number of things. And if we want to get a percentage, we can times that by a hundred. So the count of the event, this is going to be the numerators. Uh, we're looking at how many occurrences. So this can be activities, the morbidity, mor mortality, resources, um, raw data. So a lot of the times uh, in the numerators, we're looking at uh, throwing in a very specific uh, data element, or we could even do a, um, a comparison or a, or a arithmetic based on data elements. We could have one data element minus another one or multiplied by another one, but oftentimes we're bringing in the data elements themselves to be these numerators. The denominator is uh, what we're comparing it to. So we're comparing it to the target, the genders, the age groups, the cases, time. Um, these can all be uh, data elements that we've entered in a, in a very specific set up uh, sort of database or data set uh, if we want to create the targets or they can also be separate uh, data elements um, that are totals of our gender totals of um, the age groups uh, so these can also be mathematical functions based on data elements So indicators are easy to calculate but difficult to construct. So um, this is a little bit larger than DHIS2, this slide, but it gives a good sense of, of what we really are trying to get to with an indicator. Uh, people spend their entire careers developing and, and building indicators, uh, so I'm not going to go into necessarily all the specifics, and I definitely don't have um, the time or, or the training to, to do that, and, and every indicator is very different. But we do know that all indicators should be reliable and, and reproducible, especially because then we can share that information uh, across sectors and across um, different companies and, and uh, just make sure that number is reproducible as well as reliable. Um, it's appropriate, so of course it fits in with the local needs and decisions uh, that need to be made. Uh, it's valid, so it truly measures what is of interest. It's, it's correct, of course. Um, it's easy, so we're able to collect it with a numerator and denominator and compute it without much difficulty. That's, that's very important. Uh, it could be very possible to get a lot of indicators that require far too much uh, data, and um, when it comes down to it, it's not actually much better to, uh, in terms of the usable, actionable data. So uh, we want to find something that's easy because we don't want to waste time collecting and, and, and computing data. And of course, it's it's sensitive and specific. So uh, sensitive being that it it picks up small changes and reflects those changes within the indicator, and it's specific. So uh, it re it relates exactly 
uh, to what's uh, being reported. Um, it relates specifically to being what is being studied, I should say, in the report. Uh, it's not b more broad than is needed. It's as specific as possible. So uh, it's a balance between all of these uh, five different things. Um, and that balance is ongoing and ever shifting, but uh, just something to remember uh, when creating indicators. Now the types of indicators. Uh, so we have about four different types of indicators. We have the count indicators. These are uh, specific counts. Um, indicators can be uh, a data element as a numerator over one, which means that um, the data element itself is the indicator. We can have a one-to-one -one comparison of a data element and the indicator being the exact same thing, uh, if that's what you want. So count might be that type of thing, or a count might be uh, a total of a number of data elements added together. Uh, proportion num indicators uh, would be the numerator divided by the denominator expressed as a percentage. So we looked at that earlier in a slide, and that's of course numerator over denominator times 100. And then in our data visualizer, we can just show that as a percentage. Rate indicators, we're looking at a measure of frequency of events during a specific time period in specified population. And it's often expressed within the one per 1,000 population uh, or as a percentage. And that depends on uh, how you want to look at it. But it's very easy to make that uh, indicator uh, or change it within the system. And of course, ratio indicators are uh, comparisons between two groups. Um, and so that's, uh, that's about as, as simple as it gets, a comparison between uh, two groups. So best practices. Um, it's good to um, make sure that you're using, uh, it says annualized when combining monthly and annual data. So uh, that's a good thing to remember that that data is collected in different time periods and you always wanna make sure that you're uh, comparing the right thing. You don't want to compare an annual data and a monthly data and call it monthly or compare it uh, in a confusing way. If, you're, if you have monthly data, you need to make sure that that is um, covering all of the months and then compared to that annual data. Um, same with weekly and bi-monthly or bi-annually, any of that stuff. And uh, when you want to create calculations without denominators, this is what I said earlier, you want to use the factor of one and uh, number yes. Uh, so that means that uh, you're not going to have a denominator basically, or the denominator is one, and uh, your numerator therefore equals your indicator. And for data elements with categories, um, when you go into the uh, indicator screen, and we'll show that in the next slide, you can use subtotals and totals, and that'll be uh, directly available within the system. And this is why uh, categories are so useful when creating data sets, is because they automatically give us the subtotals for those categories when we're creating indicators, uh, and it allows us to be much more specific, which was one of those great things that we wanted to look at. So let's look at that on the next slide. So this is an example of the uh, editing enumerator window that you're going to be looking at. The edit denominator looks the exact same in DHIS2. Uh, this isn't live, this is just a screenshot, but uh, from here I can explain to you how it works. And you'll be getting here from the data elements and indicators app within DHIS2. That's where you uh, work on all these. So when you go into your indicators and you select create new and, and you go down to the bottom and you, you say edit numerator, this is what you'll see. And this is where the, the, the meat of uh, the, new, the indicator uh, happens in, in edit numerator and edit denominator. So this is uh, specifically where I wanted to show you guys. Uh, you might have read about it if you've been reading along. So uh, the description is where you're going to describe the indicator and this will come up in your data um, visualization screen whether it's your chart or your pivot table. So that's the description it should be a clear uh, definition of what this mathematical formula is. Now the constants are based on if you've created any constants in the system and the organization unit counts is connected to uh, which one you want to choose for that. Uh, specifically we're going to be looking at data elements in the formula and the description fields for now. So uh, how you create your numerator, if you just want it to be a single data element you'll double click on that data element and it'll appear in the formula box as an alphanumeric code. This is how the system uh, keeps track of all these data elements. It's a unique 
code, uh, which is totally unintelligible for the most part, unless you've created a very fancy system for yourself. And at the bottom in the description, it'll give the name of that data element so you can see exactly what is in the formula box. Uh, now you can play around with the formula box by all of these uh, brackets and multiplication, division, uh, addition and subtraction buttons, of course even days. Uh, and that's how you can create a complex formula for your numerator or denominator. And whatever you create in that formula box uh, will be described in the description in a more um, understandable fashion. So it'll be all of the actual names of the indicators uh, and then the mathematical function beside it or between it or bracketed around it. Uh, if the formula doesn't work, uh, the description should say error um, within it. So that should give you a heads up. Um, but of course, sometimes uh, it'll be a little bit lagging behind. It might not tell you immediately or um, there might be uh, a, a problem actually in the formula in terms of uh, the way that you're asking the formula. The formula itself might be mathematically sound. It's just not giving you the result that you want. So uh, definitely take the time that you need in creating these formulas. Uh, save when you're done. And um, that's how you're going to create indicators. So um, that's the end of this video for now. Next is going to be a little slide, uh, just checking um, a little quiz, I should say, which is next. And uh, thank you for watching. All right, so hopefully you uh, were able to pass that little quiz. It wasn't too hard. And um, thank you so much for watching. That's it for now. Uh, the next video is going to be uh, also on data output. The next two videos are on the data visualization and on the, the pivot tables within DHIS2. If you have any questions, of course, you can reach us at logicaloutcomes.net uh, or you can reach me specifically at nicholas at logicaloutcomes.net.